Oh hi, thanks for watching my video. So I've got a bit of an interesting one for you today. If you use the build and buy tools in The Sims 4, you'll probably notice that all of the objects have descriptions. Some are just basic paragraphs describing the materials, and some are pieces of information that when put together, form a story. I recently made a video about the life of Princess Cordelia, a story that is told through the build and buy objects. I don't normally pay attention to objects descriptions, mainly because, you know, lazy. But when I was doing my research for the Cordelia story, I couldn't help notice the name Queen Louisa Nanette kept popping up. Her name was featured in various objects and I noticed that the way the descriptions were written were quite different. There isn't much information available on Queen Louisa, even if you Google it, you won't find much. But according to The Sims 4, she existed. And she was a firecracker. Information on Queen Louisa Nanette can be found in the Build and Buy objects in the Get Famous expansion pack. Looking through all of the objects and trying to put a timeline together leads me to believe that Louisa's royal title came through marriage. It looks to me like all of the objects were built after moving into the palace, and the descriptions read like they were designed for a young newlywed. The story does not specify what happened to Louisa's king, though. They don't seem to get any mention after the initial introduction. When Queen Louisa first entered her newly decorated bedroom, the first thing she noticed was the beautiful white drapes, framing the breathtaking garden outside the palace. She was so fixated on the view that she didn't even notice the extravagant bed that had been made for her. A beautiful bed with embellishments carved from precious metals. There were no pillows fancier or fluffier in all the kingdom. But her sight was on the curtains, and due to the extravagance of the curtains, tending them was an imposing task. They were cleaned twice a week by her staff. The Queen had only one pet, a small white kitten named Fleur, who used to hide in the curtains and pounce out at the staff. It's safe to say that Louisa was used to the finer things in life. She often got her own way and loved her life of luxury. On hot summer afternoons, Queen Louisa would laze upon her sofa, fanning herself. Her kitten Fleur also had a sofa and if anyone dared touch it, they would face the pit of judgement for a meeting with the pit monster. Seems like a fair and reasonable punishment. You can tell this lady is level-headed. Queen Louisa Nanette's ladies-in-waiting kept Her Highness entertained with musical performances and dainty pastries. The Queen's favourite entertainment, though, was gossip. Louisa wasn't particularly tall, however her hair was often styled in an updo that sometimes reached almost three foot above her head. Quite comically, really, that she loved gossiping so much. Many said that's why her hair was so tall. It was full of secrets. Hang on, where have I heard that before? That's why her hair is so big, it's full of secrets. Speaking of the Queen's hair, not only was it tall, but it was often laced with pearls, feathers and precious gems. When painting portraits of the Queen, the space behind her often felt empty, so a love seat was specifically made to rival the height of her hair. It was called the Portrait of Perfection Love Seat. The Queen had a bit of an obsession with feathers. She had an absurdly large collection, and when they weren't in her hair, she'd keep them in the extravagantly glided shelf on display. Dinner time was quite an ordeal in the palace. Louisa Nanette always sat at the head of the table. Those who joined her would wait until she had her first bite before they could begin eating, and when she finished, they also had to finish. Fun side fact, this is also the case if you dine with the Queen of England, who likes to eat burgers and chocolate. Thankfully, both monarchs are slow eaters, so there's plenty of time to eat. Queen Louisa, however, was a firm believer in 12 course meals, so you can imagine with 12 courses and a, an atrociously slow eater, dinner time would take hours. Thankfully, her guests would have less extravagant but very comfortable dining chairs. Along with the army of staff, the Queen also had a jester called Jax. Jax played the fool for the Queen and her audience, but secretly longed for a place by her side. During his downtime in his humble dwellings, he would watch the Queen through the window, swanning around the palace accompanied by her entourage. The Queen's handmaids used to lure Jax into the main halls to ridicule him, 
but he went willingly in order to get a glimpse of the queen as she wandered around. Among one of his favourite locations to evade prolonged unwanted attention was the Hall of Windows. Having grown bored of predictable palace layouts, the Queen commanded the construction of the Hall of Windows, an elaborate maze of halls and small chambers with windows in place of walls. It was often used as a form of entertainment as guests were challenged to get through the maze within a time limit. Although Jax's longing for the Queen went unnoticed, there was one time when he came very close to revealing his true feelings. One day, he was scurrying through the palace trying to avoid the Queen's handmaids when he froze in front of this window, for on the other side, the object of his undying love reached down to pluck a thorny rose. As she brought the rose to her face, she peered at the window to see her reflection, but gazed through to see Jax. Her eyes caught him, and with a smile, she beckoned him to her side. As he stood before her, the Queen's radiance shone upon them like the morning's first light upon dew-coloured roses. I know, this is some real Shakespearean shit, isn't it? Life, the world, paused eternally as he considered the words he'd longed to say to her. As he opened his mouth to finally speak, he instead belly-flopped into nearby mud around the rose bush. Long after the laughter subsided, the Queen and her entourage grow bored and left. He stood up, brushed off as much as he could, and peered at the faded sim in the window. He couldn't feel it, but tears streamed down the reflection's muddied cheeks. It seems a rather anticlimactic and quite a sad ending to the story, but this is all the information we have. Whether Jax ever did reveal his true feelings for the Queen remains a mystery, but who knows? Maybe another piece of the puzzle will come one day. What do you think of the story of Queen Louisa? Do you like that there are stories like this buried in the Build and Buy catalogue? I'd love to know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.